Hello guys, hope you're all well. After my brilliant reception for the first landing to 101 episode, we're on to the next part in the series. Here I'll be going over some of the more advanced flying techniques you'll need to know. Now we've already gone over key bindings and peripherals such as track IR. If you haven't seen that video it will be linked down below. Alright let's get into the first section of this advanced landings 101. Okay, so you're spooling up in your brand spanking new hummingbird you just spent 800 quid on in cough. Bob, the anti-air gremlin, is set up and ready to blast you out the sky. <laughs> I can't wait to take them out the sky. <laughs> your engine cuts out. What do you do? It's time to auto-rotate. Without getting all heli dragony, basically, if you lower the collective of your helo, and reduce your speed as if you were about to land, the blades will continue to spin, slowing your rate of descent. So as you drop, there is stored energy in the blades, which creates a cushion of air for you to softly land. I'm all too familiar with auto-rotation from cough alone. Now, there are a tried and tested list of protocols you can follow so you can ensure a good chance of survival in this emergency landing. Firstly, Depending on which helo you're in, you pretty much always want to be flying with a decent amount of speed. This isn't just evasive for the guy trying to shoot you down, it also means that you have enough time between the critical shot where you do lose your engine power and then your reaction with auto rotation. In larger helos and in bumpier terrain, this will be very challenging, so your best bets for these are flying at moderate altitudes. For the little bird, you can auto rotate at almost any altitude and really almost any terrain type. Here, you can see my response to the loss of engine power. I pitch up to slow my descent and continue banking using my pedals to control where my helo will touch down, all whilst holding down the S key. Do not let go of your decreased throttle key or you can kiss you and your shiny new helo goodbye. These steps are not always exhaustive though, so practice is the best remedy I can offer. I will be linking the same single player mission from the last video, which can be set up to trigger a random engine failure during flight, so you can practice your responses as if it were an online session. Now that's taken care of, the tail rotor is an equally challenging beast to master when it's gone. Dyslexy has a brilliant term for the tail loss recovery process and he names it rocking out. What is meant by this is that in any given tail strike situation you need to gain altitude to a reasonable and safe level and then dive down to a low altitude to cancel out the loss of your tail. What this does is basically when you pick up your speed massively like this, you remove the need for your tail rotor. I'm not actually 100% sure on the aerodynamic philosophy behind all of this, but it just works. Now, this is until you slow down, of course, but hopefully you're getting away from the enemy fire after rocking out, which is the main purpose of this maneuver. So by then, hopefully, you can slowly edge it down back at base. The main thing when you're landing without a tail is not to overcorrect and overcompensate when the heli is spinning and you're trying to land. Go with its movements instead of trying to counter them constantly. So now we're on to the really exciting stuff, the creme de la creme, which is how to land without gaining altitude. I'm going to outline other types of landings and the times you would use them, but for now we're going to go over the classic bleed flare landing. I've got my controls in an overlay now, alongside a replay of this one landing clip which will demonstrate a bleed flare. This type of landing is best done with a track IR or increased field of view since it's hard to judge how close the tail is to the ground. If it hits, it is very very likely 
that the helo will explode at this altitude and speed, taking your passengers out in the process. The most important thing with this landing is that you balance your speed out beforehand. Practice this by picking an imaginary LZ in the editor, pull back on your mouse so the cyclic comes backwards, whilst holding the S key to decrease your throttle. Keep easing back on your mouse pad until you notice the helo begins to descend. A strong bleed flare without gaining altitude is just a well-managed version of this balancing of the speed. Keep in mind, larger helos will take much longer to achieve this state and so you'll be pulling back on the cyclic a lot earlier on. Now you've got the balance speed state, you're going to want to actually land. This requires three things. Strong visual observation of your surroundings, keeping spatial awareness of your helo and its dimensions, as well as subtle control inputs. Many, many people crash at this stage because they let one of these things slide. Stay aware, stay focused and in control of the helo's movements. You can pull back on the pad fully to bleed off any remaining speed. But wait, you see that? I'm tapping the S key, sometimes holding it, but mostly tapping it on the way down. If you get too greedy with your loss of altitude, it will end badly. Depending on how quick your approach is, sometimes you'll even need a bit of throttle increase to slow your descent before landing. This is very finicky, so expect it to take a while to master. For me personally, I used to love the challenge of this, and I kept trying again and again until I finally got it. If you make it fun, you'll actually want to be proactive and then practice. Now the next type of landing utilises the emergency bindings with my pitch up key being the X key, sometimes referred to as a J hook landing. This requires constant adaptation to the terrain around you as well as quick control inputs and reactions. I'm flying over the AO city knowing I'll land somewhere on a street. I bank either left or right, whichever you prefer, and hold X, this bleeds my speed off in a low altitude arc, minimising potential enemy fire. Once I feel like the speed has gone and the heli wants to drop, I press the S key to decrease the throttle even more and begin to take a more precise approach. This is where your pedals will decide if you live or die. You'll be in a very enclosed space most likely when doing this type of landing, so you'll want to be using your pedals to swing the helo to avoid any obstacles that are nearby. The final manoeuvre I want to talk about is the downward spiral landing. This requires much more control input than the normal bleed flare, but it is much slower than the J-hook turn. This landing requires much better planning and understanding of your LZ, which makes it less viable for spontaneous impromptu landings. Pick a direction you want to shift the helo in. For me, it's nearly always left, so I bleed my speed as usual like in the balance state until my heli wants to drop then I'll bank a little to the left with my mouse whilst holding the A key for my left pedal. Some have commented on my videos that this looks like a Tokyo Drift kind of landing which sort of sums it up. Your main goal with this landing is a smooth but still relatively fast touchdown using lots of pedal input to bleed off any remaining speed on your final approach. Anyhow, I hope these three types of landings are of some help to you guys. They classify pretty much every kind of landing or LZ approach you can see in my videos. As always, the finesse of these techniques and the smoothing out of rough edges simply comes with time and practice. I just wanted to add this bit in as a little segment about the importance of understanding game mode differences in armour. Take me for an example, I leave my most daring and experimental flying for the editor, and sometimes King of the Hill. 
I'm not saying you should all hop on cough and throw the team mohawk into a backflip, but I am saying that you can take liberties on certain game modes. Of course, your top priority as a pilot is to ensure the safe transport of your troops and aircrew. As you get into the groove of flying, you can start to take more and more risks such as flying lower, under power lines, and bit by bit you'll build your piloting skills up until you are very difficult to take out of the skies. Unless Bob is online that is. <laughs> As always guys, I really hope all of this helps and you've learned about the ancient wizardry that goes into landing. And as always, I'm on Twitch quite often now, which is picked up with really great support. So check me out on there if you're interested in that. I wish you guys a very Merry Christmas at the time of making this video. I'll see you in the next one where we'll be looking at pawnies and gunships. Goodbye guys.